Welcome to the second episode of the Registration Management Series, Deceased Voters. This episode is intended to bring clarity to the processes in place to make modifications to the voter roll when someone passes away. Similar to our last episode on inactive voters, election offices have procedures in place with different state and local agencies that collect or process information on the deceased, like municipal government offices or the state registrar of vital statistics. These organizations produce a list of those individuals to whom they provided services that have passed away over a period of time and then provide that information to election officials on a regular basis, be it monthly, quarterly, or annually. Election officials compare these lists to their voter registration list and if a registered voter's information matches, their registration status will be adjusted accordingly. This means, for example, that a mail-in ballot could no longer be requested under that voter's name nor would that voter show up as eligible to vote in a local poll book on election day. In the unique circumstance in which a voter submits a mail-in ballot prior to passing away and before election day, the mail-in ballot will not be counted if the election official is made aware of the passing prior to election day. An in-person early voter's ballot, however, will be counted since it was provided in person to the election official while the individual was still living. Since the security procedures for all voting processes start with voter registration, keeping the voter registration list accurate makes it difficult for an ineligible voter to participate. Removing the names of those who've passed away is an unfortunate yet necessary part of this process. So as you can see, there's a very specific and detailed set of procedures dedicated to ensuring that those who have passed do not inadvertently pass along their right to vote. These processes are intended to respect those who have passed while ensuring that the votes of eligible voters are the only ones that get counted. So what other scenarios can you think of that would need to be considered for registration management? How about a voter who moves and may now have multiple addresses? Stick with me and let's roll over to episode three of the registration management series, tackling those changes in voter addresses. And we're off.